is Chicago. Chicago really has has you know a musical you know yeah. bubble that is created that is extremely powerful. It really does. And it, the 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 unfortunate thing is there's no the, the ceiling is kind of low. You know, yeah. particularly after the guys with Chess and all of those you know uh, record companies uh, uh, left Chicago. There's a real low ceiling, but you still have all of these musicians mm -hmm. in Chicago who play in every little nook and cranny around there. And so who are really great musicians, but don't, you don't, they don't get to be famous in the way that they would if you were maybe in New York right. or in right. Los Angeles. Right. Right. So you start working, you're, you're playing more professionally, you're starting to organize your schedule, you know, you're starting to keep yourself, you know, into that professional level. Mm -hmm. Where did it go from there? So you, you kind of... Well, I was playing around, um, I was playing around Chicago with a lot of different bands um, and uh, a guy named Phil Upchurch who actually is, Great musician. you know, he's an incredible musician. He's also on all of that chess stuff, on yeah, a bunch of that chess stuff, absolutely. playing bass and guitar. He, he would come, he was living in L.A., but he would come back to Chicago and play a gig and, you know, like a little residence in a club or two in town. And that was a gig that I was aware of, uh, that I was like, I would really love to play that gig because the music was a little bit more challenging than what we were, you know, playing around town. And so I eventually got called for that gig. And that's really what put me on the map in Chicago, where guys started looking at me a little bit differently. Yeah. From there, Miles Davis's nephew, Vince Wilburn Jr., and I were also playing on this scene in Chicago. What did he play? He plays drums. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He called me one day. He'd just gotten back from Japan with Miles. He called and said, hey, man, Miles wants to hear you play over the phone. <laughs> and I'm like, wait a minute, quit, you know. I'm joking. I mean, it's that serious. You know, we've dreamt about that sitting in front of the house. You bringing me home from gigs when I was too young to drive a car. You know, and um, and he said no. I, you know, and I end up talking to Miles on the phone that day, and the next day I end up auditioning for Miles. This is, and this getting is, the gig. This is so heavy. First of all, I mean, Miles, and even a name like Phil Upchurch. Yeah. And I, I always loved his name. Yeah. Up, Correct. always lifting, yeah, going right, up. Yeah. And sure. yeah, I mean, this right. guy yeah, really no, no. had it all together. Yeah, his yeah, name. Yeah. The thing is about this generation that watches these videos, when they see an even name like Phil Upchurch, to go research that. Right. Yeah. These names that you're being said, these are powerful. Absolutely. Miles, of course, you talk, you're talking to Miles on the phone. It doesn't get any deeper than that. No, was, what was that yeah. like when, when you're on the phone with him and you're talking to him? And I basically, the, the, what, what had happened is I'd said to Vince, okay, let me get my bass, you know, and... And, and so I go looking around the house, and I'm really embarrassed to say that my bass was in the trunk of my mother's car. <laughs> I had decided at that point, I'm not doing any more gigs for $50 or whatever it is. And so I was practicing this Chapman stick thing, and I was like, I'm not even playing bass until they can pay me more money in town, you know. So my mother um, had just yelled downstairs and said, do you have any gigs this week, you know? And I was like, no, Mom, I told you I'm not taking any more $50 gigs. She said, you want to take some of those $50 gigs? You can't just stay in this house. You know, I was like 21 years old. And she, I guess she was just frustrated. So she finally said, just come and wash the dishes. And that's when the phone rang. Oh my I was washing dishes when the phone rang. So Miles eventually, you know, Vince, I, I go back to the phone. And I say, Vince, uh, hold on. And he says, no, you hold on. And so the next sound I hear is, damn. When can you be in New York? <laughs> and I'm thinking, well, it's Miles Davis, so I got to be cool. Yeah, yeah. So I said, oh, I could be there. It was a Monday. I, I could be there by Wednesday. He said, what's going to take you so long? You're going to walk. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, oh, no, I'll be there tomorrow morning. I'm sure I can be there tomorrow morning. So I flew out the next morning and auditioned for him, basically. He had me play along. Where with, was your audition? In New York. Right near it. In, in his... Uh, in Cicely Tyson's niece's apartment. Oh my gosh, that's you incredible. Know? That's incredible. You know? So you're 21. I'm 21 years old. I go in, he says, play along with this gig, you know, board tape from a gig. Yeah. You don't have to play what the guy's playing, just play, you know, what you would play in that situation. It's like kind of funky jams yeah. with lines and stuff like that that they were playing. Um, I played that for a little while. He says, okay, can you play a B-flat blues? Real slow. And I said, oh yeah, sure. So I started. And he grabbed the bass, he said, I mean, slow. <laughs> and so I started playing again, and he stopped me. He said, no, I mean, real slow. So I'm playing this B flat blues for about three, you know, two, three, four minutes. And he's just listening, you know. And uh, him and Vince get up and go in the, you know, go in the, in, the, in the back room. And Vince comes out and says, you got it. 
And I'm like, no, I need him to tell me. Interesting. And so he comes out, and hits me in the shoulder and says, you got it. How powerful is that? So this kind of, a great story, Daryl. What's interesting is that this is about the, the ultimate degree of networking, mm -hmm. of where you came from, where you started, who you talked to, who you met. You know, networking is an extremely important tool for this younger generation to understand what that's mean, to yes. have the personality to converse and meet and talk and be friendly and acceptable and polite and all that stuff that comes with it. Miles had this incredible talent of being able to find young, great future musicians mm -hmm. at, on all instruments. And the fact that they had they're 21 days. When was the first gig? The first gig was um, eight days later. <laughs> I rehearsed so did with you the, stay in New York? I stayed in New York. I rehearsed with the band like once. Yeah. Or with part of the band. I think Mino, Cena, Lou, Al Foster was playing drums at the time. Rehearsed with them and I think John Schofield came to rehearsal. Uh, Mike Stern was in the band at the time. Um, rehearsed once with them, flew back to Chicago and just started getting it together and flew to, to St. Louis for the 7th of uh, June. Uh, they, that All that happened on the last day of, of, of uh, May, 1983, I auditioned the, uh, the 1st of June, and we played the first gig the 7th of June. Well, that's incredibly yeah. powerful. Like, what a life lesson. You, know, you mentioned names like Al Foster and Schofield and Mike Stern. These are names that, again, I want people to understand. Mm -hmm. Do the research. Yes. These, yes. Are not, these are names that you're just kind of yeah. throwing out because you work with the guys. Mm -hmm. These are powerful. Oh. It's not even like they, 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 all of them have had careers. They're, they've got movements. Exactly. That's Al true. Foster has my heart when he yeah. plays. Oh, man. He, he, yeah. he, he just he just swings, you know, when he just sits at the drum set before yeah, no, he even grabs the sticks, he's swinging. It's, it, it's, that, it's really yeah. it. Yeah. So, so you, how long were you with Miles? What, what happened as you went on the road? And Played with Miles for, um, for over a year, went on the road, did, you know, uh, the, you know, the festivals in the States, and more importantly, like, not really more importantly, but more, uh, we did a lot more work in Europe at yeah. that time. We did a whole tour of just France. Wow. Um, but all over Europe, um, back and forth in the States. Um, Branford Marcellus came in and played on the first record that I played on, which was with Miles. That was like probably uh, 83, November 83, uh -huh. that we started recording that record. So I met Branford. I, whom I had met the first night I played with Miles because he was playing with Herbie Hancock at the, at the time, and it was odd. What's odd about that I have to mention is that in the new in the music magazines, he and Winton were considered the anti-electric guys, right, you know, right, or particularly right. Winton. Right. And uh, so I didn't think that I was going to have any real friends there that first night. I realized those guys, are, you know, I'm probably not. Well, they were very very welcoming to me, both him and Winton which was a big thing because these guys were at the pinnacle, they were my age, yeah. and they really welcomed me. You know, I have to say that Winton yeah. really welcomed me too. That to, says to a lot about scene. your playing because you know? they were kind of anti-electric yeah. what they were. Yeah. So the fact that you must have played so great that you just, they, they surpassed the electronic well, part right, of it well, and got to the I, core of know, the music. That's really well, huge. That's what they were talking about. But I, I, you know, I, I was, you know, just doing the best that I could. That was another part of it. It's like, I decided before I went on stage that first night, you know, I have to really play the way I play tonight. Yeah. And I have to just do it absolutely the best that I can. Yeah. And, um, and if that works, then this will be a great ride. Right. You know, if not, I don't want to get caught up trying to play like the guy before me or because then I'll have to keep doing that. Right, 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 right. right. So, um, and, and, and also because it's Miles Davis and, you know, of course, we'd all heard about his mercurial personality yeah. and, and I just decided every night I go on stage, I'm just going to play the best that I can play, which is not the same as the most <laughs> that I can Absolutely. play. Absolutely. You know Absolutely. what I mean? It's like I'm going to listen and pay attention and really try to be in the music, you know, yeah. and let the musicians around me influence what I play, you know, and Miles. And so uh, that became a kind of every night thing. M much later on, I was with Miles one, one night. Uh, he would he always ask me to bring my bass when I just hung out with him in the, in the, in the apartment. And uh, so I picked, he said, play that thing that you play on the little part where I give you a solo. So I picked up the bass and I started playing. And he grabs, he like doubles over and he grabs the bass and he says, Damn, did you hear the way you played that first note? And I was like, what? 
But what had happened is that that effort to play the best that I could play yeah. at every moment, you know, every moment that I was on stage with him had really kind of gotten into because my natural of way of playing. Huge. That's huge. You know what I mean? Huge. And so so when I was playing this note, I was just going boo, you know, <laughs> but it was coming out like you know, because there was all of this intention. Yeah behind it you know but it's funny you mentioned that word because I, I when I when I interviewed Steve Gadd we talked about being in the moment in the now mm -hmm. and intention about the, the before you even play where is your mind at yeah. you know the intention of being able to play the best you can play which I love your humility mm -hmm. that's powerful mm -hmm. to play the best you can play in the moment at that time to react to what's happening at that time right. and to be able to listen to every musician all the time right. so you hear everything going on that's a skill that that yeah. takes time to learn that obviously Miles saw that in you as did yeah. Winton and, and, and Brantford yeah. I guess yeah. incredible so so j just talk about the business part so now you're you're playing with these guys are you keeping track of like you know finances are you, are you know are you finding yourself organizing yourself are you are you you know writing it do you have a schedule book is no, there anything not so much yeah. not so much at that period um, I, um, I mean, I wasn't doing really silly things with the money. I was yeah. definitely buying instruments and yeah. and trying to, you know, find the best amplifier and trying to find, you know, you know, gear that that would really work. Um, but uh, I, 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 looking back, I really wish I had been mm. much more, you know, conscious of of those things. I do remember, you know, six or eight months in, hiring a, an accountant, nice. and wow. and and my parents were very, very adamant that I paid taxes on time nice. and what I was supposed to pay because they said the, the, the list of musicians who go out and do well mm. and then lose it all because Absolutely. they haven't taken care of those things Absolutely. is long, you Absolutely. know, you know, and so, um, so that was something that they were, you know, kind of on me about. So I guess in that way, mm. I did, you know, take, you know, pay, pay attention to, to, you know, you know, those, you know, those kinds of you know, dotting of eyes Detail. and crossing. Yeah, yeah. You have to you have to pay attention to that. Tell me a little bit about your parents because you, you're here. You're 21. You're mm -hmm. you're washing dishes. Next, you know, you get a call, then you're leaving the next day to go talk. To, you know, talk yeah. to Miles and yeah. play with him. And then you're on tour with Miles, and you didn't really go back right away. So, what what, what was their reaction to all this? Well, my dad, you know, was, was you know, imagine, you know, jazz yeah. musician. He, you know, of course, <laughs> you know, when I walked upstairs after that phone call and said to him, "Can you lend me a couple hundred bucks? I got to get to New York." I got an audition with Miles Davis. He kind of looked at me like, okay, <laughs> but you got an audition with Miles Davis. You know what I mean? He was, you know, but uh, no, then when things started working out well, uh, um, they basically, you know, I, I have to say, you know, people say to me, you know, um, uh, you know, y your parents must have been very proud of you. Yeah. The truth is, man, I'm very proud of my parents. Wow. I was lucky with that one. Um, very um, open, inquisitive um, uh, uh, people who taught me to be proud of who I am, taught me to um, to make sure that people treated me, you know, with respect, yeah. no matter who they were, right. um, uh, and also gave me the tools to kind of go out in the world and do like what you were talking about: be polite to people, yeah. um, be fair with people. Um, you know, you know, you know, don't be too messy. Don't be trying to get into too many, yeah. you know, uh, you know, things. Just trying to, you know, kind of keep your place, be, you know, have fun. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, you know, that's one of the things I tell um, musicians a lot is like, you don't need to be in every conversation. You don't need, you know, there's a certain, because like we know yeah. a lot of great musicians who are, can play their ass off. <laughs> But they can't keep a gig because yeah. there there's something that they're doing Absolutely. wrong socially. Absolutely, Absolutely. you know. This and is, so is, this I is, was given all of those that's tools powerful before yeah, I got to yeah. be 21 years old, and all of this stuff happened. So, the, you know, I, I thank them for that. That is, is beautiful. That's powerful because that's an important message for this next generation to realize that those still core principles yeah. and values and ethics of who yeah. we are as people really is going to be. Probably the strongest connection when you meet people mm -hmm. that's gonna where they're gonna believe in you and then gonna want to be involved with you. Exactly. So, how, so how, how did the stones? How, I mean, you know, here you. That was much later. Yeah. Actually, um, this weird thing happened where I was playing with.